Hey guys, quite a bit to get through on this Goblin King topper, so let's jump straight in. It's always handy to have some phone core on hand, especially if you use my tutorials, because I love this stuff. As always, the materials are listed below. I've drawn out a circle that's the same size as my top tier. In this case, it's five inch. You want to cut it out with a sharp scalpel. Now the stone base is a square shape, so I'm cutting this down to a square so I know it will fit. You can either measure it or use your cutoff piece for a guide on the opposite side, which is the lazy option and the one I always choose. You should be left with a square shape and soft edges. On the edges, use piping gel for glue and you can use water for the white covering. Roll out some grey paste and place it over your shape, cutting off some of the excess and flipping it onto a foam pad. Adhere the sides and trim them flat. To texture, it's that free tool again, rolled up tinfoil. Once that's done, roll out some more grey paste, keeping it quite chunky. Lay this on top and trim it down to make a matching shape, but smaller. And texture that too. Now search your house. You're looking for a circle that will fit inside that top shape. For me, it was this spare IKEA plant pot. Check your mugs and glasses and see if you have something suitable. Use this to draw around onto the foam core. You'll need a few discs depending on the thickness of your foam. With some hot glue, glue them all together to create a stack. That's what's great about foam core. You can glue the white bits together and it's also soft enough in the centre to poke supports through like kebab sticks. Now I've got some purple paste. This one is by a brand called Icewise who kindly sent me some to try. I adore the shade of it and it's really rich yet vibrant. Glue a chunky circle to the top and then stick the whole stack onto the stone base. Now start rolling out thin strips of the purple and attach them to the front and sides. As you stick it, fold some over to create pleats. Smooth down the tops towards the centre. You only have to do the front for now. Insert a cocktail stick down in the centre at the back, followed by two more at either side. Trim them down so they decrease in size as they get to the front. Roll out teardrops of purple and cover the sticks, texturing them to look like pleats of fabric. Trim the very tops just to expose a bit of the stick. With triangles of paste, start to cover the back, starting at the stick and then letting it flow over the stonework. Add pieces on, finishing with a central back piece. Roll out a pale brown sausage that tapers at either end. Lay this across the sticks and press down gently, curling the ends into little spirals. Add some purple blobs under the spirals just to elevate them slightly. With the same colour, roll out thin sausages and add them over the chair back. With a grey paste, squash an oval shape and place it on the throne like a seat, squashing it out at the edges. Now we can start on Jareth. Roll out a grey sausage, leaving the middle chunkier. 
fold it and then thin out the legs. Pinch in the knees and then cut just below these as he will be wearing boots. Mark in some crease lines on his pants and place him almost sideways folding one knee down and elevating the other with a sponge. Yep, it's those craft sponges again. Told you the chameleon always comes in handy. For his boots, roll some black paste with a little tilo added into a sausage and bend the end into a foot. Roll in a thinner ankle between your fingers and pinch in a heel. You should have something like this. Then trim it down to size and mark in a heel on the base of the boot, gently teasing it longer and thinner and pulling the end of the boot into a soft point. Stick those to the ends of the legs, finishing the join with a black strip. Replace the sponge with paper so it's easier to get to. For the torso, this is also black with a little tilo added. Roll a soft rectangle and cut the bottom flat. With a scalpel, carefully marking a V shape and remove that section, patting it down neatly inside. Place this onto the pants, inserting a cocktail stick to secure it. The neck is flesh colour also with tilo added so it will hold the head once it's dry. Roll one end to a point, this will slide down the stick and fill the V shape. Squeeze the neck thinner and then cut it off to the desired height. Insert another cocktail stick higher up to secure the head. Roll out some mini white carrot shapes to frame the V neck. Then drag pieces downwards to create a fluffy ruffle in the shirt. A white sausage makes an arm and give it a slight bend to create a relaxed pose. Hands are flesh ovals with one side slightly flattened more than the other. Cut in at an angle to create a thumb and then cut straight down removing a triangle shape. Mark in three slits to make four fingers. Gently separate the fingers and twist them. As you smooth out the cut edge, they will get longer. With two fingers, gently roll beneath the thumb for a wrist. Push the fingers back together and that's one little hand done. Cut the wrist down and add it to the end of the arms. Cover the join with white sausages pulled into ruffles with a Dresden tool. For his necklace, roll a small amount of yellow, tapered at each end and then curled into a C-shape. Place this with the points down onto the chest and mark in a hole and then create the necklace with some dark brown paste. For his head, roll a ball of flesh paste and tease it into a slight egg. Run your finger across halfway for where the eyes will sit. A small flesh teardrop makes a nose which you will want to blend in. Mark in a straight line across, Jareth doesn't smile much. Beneath this line, leave a small gap and press in with a Dresden tool you'll see a bottom lip starting to appear. 
tease in a pointed chin and then move on to the top lip. This is a lot of faffing. Marking it in and then pushing the paste around, flattening below the nose, but leaving the top lip intact. It's just lots of messing and manipulating. Create easy eye sockets by pressing in with a Dresden tool and then widening them. Place white paste into these holes and flatten it level. And as always, black dots for pupils and small white ones for catch lights. Makeup time. You can use white dust and water if you like, but I just had this to hand. It's pearlescent white paint by Rainbow Dust. Paint in two spikes above the eyes and then line them with black paint. You can also line the individual eyes to make them stand out. Watered down red gel will add enough colour to the lips. I then decided I wanted some harsher cheekbones, so I'm just adding them by pressing in with a Dresden tool. Slide the head down onto the stick. At this point, it kind of looks like a really weird, bald Joanna Lumley. Sorry, Joanna. Paint her up for a new do. With yellow and brown mixed, Roll it out and mark in some hairlines to the bottom and sides. Place this at the height you want and then pull the excess up to a point, trimming off any heavy parts. Finally, snip it all flat with some scissors. Then allocate a few hours to rolling out thin strands of hair, some long ones for the sides and some short ones to create a fringe. Just apply them with water and a Dresden tool. Eventually, he will have his full head of spiky hair. As a last addition, you can make an owl. Roll out a little stub of white, marking in separate legs. Roll around the base of the head to thin it out. Kind of looks like a big fat tooth. Using either a wire or a cocktail stick, insert this through the arm and the chair to secure the owl. Mark in eye sockets and add black balls and a tiny tiny carrot of yellow for a beak in the centre. flattened brown teardrops for wings on either side and his claws are small strands of yellow folded into a backward C with one straight strand in the middle. A tiny claw. Add two of these to the base of the owl. Paint on some watered down brown around the head and it's done. Joanna Lumley and her pet. Feel free to shade it with either paint, dust or an airbrush. I added airbrush colour once it was all set up on the cake. As it's all one piece on its own base, it can be kept as an ornament at room temperature. Perfect for any labyrinth fan, and yes, there's a lot of you out there. So next, I'll show you how to add him to the cake. Even though it's foam core, which is nice and lightweight, there's also quite a bit of sugar paste and it's always best to support toppers. Insert three in a triangular formation and cut them level with the top of the cake. Add melted ganache, chocolate or royal icing as a glue and place your topper on, moving it into position before it sets. Here he is on top of his throne with other labyrinth characters below before it got shaded. And here he is with a darker stone base. Easy to pop off the top of the cake and keep. Hope you like this one. If you're a big fan of Joanna Lumley or Jareth, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed, feel free to join this little cherry brigade family for tutorials every Tuesday. Bye guys.